Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through the basic steps of creating your book form for the Book of Hours project. So we're making a book just like it, it would have been made during the Renaissance uh, using paper and then stitching the paper together to create the book. Now your book is made up of individual sheets of paper and the folded sheet of paper is called a folio. Okay, so this is one piece of paper. It's been folded in half. And a folio has four sides. And each side, each page is called a leaf. So one folio has four leaves. So if we are making our book with five sheets of paper or five folios when they're folded in half, you're going to end up with a simple book that has 20 pages or 18 pages if you don't want to count the front and back cover. You can use up to eight sheets of paper for this project, but I wouldn't do more than that uh, because it becomes a little difficult to stitch. So here are some of the supplies that you'll need to get started and you can make this book along with my video, pausing where you need to. A uh, ruler is great to have, uh, pencil, scissors, needle, thread and then if you have something like this a binder clip or a paper clip a bobby pin even that will become really useful when we're stitching the books together All right so before we get started i just wanted to show you a few simple book forms so that you can see what your project will look like when it's done this is an earlier example that i created and you can see when i open it up the red thread along the the spine. That's what holds all of the pages of this book together. And I used a thicker paper from my sketchbook for the cover. And then on the inside, just regular copy paper, which is what we're using for this assignment. You're only going to see the stitching for your book when it's open to the middle on the center fold. Otherwise, you, you won't see it, but you might see little hints of the stitching, and that's perfectly fine. If you've got some scrap paper lying around and you feel like making more books, you can do something like this. I use the back cover of an old magazine because it's a little bit thicker, so it'll protect the paper inside. And with some scrap paper that I had lying around, I made the same three hole pamphlet stitch that I'm gonna demonstrate for you in this video. All right, so there's a lot of possibilities with this project. Uh, with this process beyond the project that you're creating. All right, so first of all, once you've got your supplies gathered, I'd like you to take your paper vertically in front of you and fold it up. Each piece you'll fold individually, line the corners up. I like to hold them down with my fingers and then crease with my thumb. So you'll do this for all five sheets, up to eight sheets of paper. Okay, line it up and crease. And once you've got all of those sheets put together, or once you've got them all folded, you'll unfold each one and you'll nest them one inside of the other. So one, two, three, four or five. All right, and I've got an extra piece over here, so I'll just add that in. All right, so I'm going to now tap my papers against the table and that just lines them all up and clip them together with my binder clips. And then we'll go ahead and measure out for the holes that we're going to be stitching. And you can already see I've got some marks here. You can either eyeball the center of your paper and make a mark with your pencil, or this is where you'll use your ruler. So I know that my paper, it's eight and a half inches wide. So at four and a quarter, that's where I made my first mark. And then two inches either from the center or from the edge of the book, it, it doesn't matter. Make another dot. It's 
So you've got three points on the inside of this book and these are called the stations. And I'm gonna number the stations so that it's easier for you to follow along with me. All right, so now that we've got this ready, we can stitch the book together. So making your book, it's three basic steps. You prepare the paper by folding it, you measure it, and then you stitch it together. So I need a piece of string that, that is at least three times the length of my book. So one, two, three. And by doing this, it ensures that you don't accidentally run out of thread as you're working. Okay, thread your needle and we can get started. Okay, so a few tips. Hold your book opposite the side that you have clipped if you're using clips and start out by poking holes through uh, the, the points of measure. And also make sure that you're holding your fingers on either side of the spine. That way, when you poke your hole through, you're going between your fingers and not into them. And just to brace on the third hole, I'll turn it around so that I can put a little bit more force through as I poke that third hole. Right, and you'll turn your paper, your book form once again, uh, vertically. And I like to start stitching on the outside of my book. And I'll tell you why at the end. So because we pre-poked the hole, we can just line up the needle with that hole and pull it through the first station and leave a little tail on the outside of your book and hold it with your fingers. So I'm gonna hold it with my fingers again around the spine of the book and I'll turn it back to the inside. All right, now we'll go through the second hole or the second station. So we came up from the back through number one, down through number two. So we're now on the outside of the book again. And we'll skip over the middle and go to that third hole at the very top. So you'll end up with one really long length of string along the outside of your book, holding the tail, pull it tight. So I always give it a little tug on the inside. So we came up through this third hole and we're gonna end by going back through the middle. So back through that first station. Okay. So you can see there's, there's quite a bit of excess here. I probably could have gotten away with um, two and a half times the length of my book, but I like three, it's a good number. So I always make it three and a half times the length. It's better to have too much than not enough. So now to finish this book, you've got your two tails, right? And you've got this big long length. You wanna make sure that one of the tails is on either side of this long piece and then you'll just make a double knot. And that's it. You can leave those strings there if you want. Actually, I think I'll leave them or you can cut them. But if you do cut them, uh, give yourself about a quarter inch or so away from the knot. That way it doesn't come apart later. All right, so that is your basic pamphlet stitch. So. Many books will actually use this type of binding, but they'll just be made up of multiple um, stacks. Each one of these stacks, this is called a signature, okay, when it's all together. So if you wanted a book that was longer than your 20 page signature, you would just make multiple signatures, stack them, and then bind them together. The reason why I like to have the knot on the outside, why we started stitching from the outside in, is because I use these as sketchbooks and I think that having a knot in the middle, it's a little bit visually disruptive and it also makes it hard to fold it flat. So that's why um, I'll put mine on the outside. So that's it for the tutorial. 
I will spend just another moment talking about the Book of Hours project. So stick around if you'd like to hear uh, more detail on that. So you've got your book and now your assignment is to create an image that's inspired by the Book of Hours. And some common things that you're gonna see as you're looking up Books of Hours in Art Store is the theme of time, right? In the Limborg Brothers Book of Hours, the painted image, they were calendar pages that showed you uh, people's lives at different times of the year. So you might think about things like the weather. Uh, I notice a lot of ornamentation in the books. And of course, Northern Renaissance work, it, it abounds with detail, right? The natural world, there's perspective, there's symbolism. So I, I just made a few kind of quick sketches from some of the ornamentation that I was seeing. And I decided that that's probably a little bit, it's too complicated for me to draw, or at least I didn't take the time to draw it the way I saw it. So I wanted to simplify it because I do want this piece to look um, like it's done in my style. So I am going to simplify some of those decorations. I will include some animals and I chose two animals that live in my backyard. So we see a lot of deer and owls. And I think some details I'll include uh, are snails. My toddler loves walking around the front yard and finding all the little snail shells in the grass. So this is where I would suggest that you guys start. Uh, as you're looking at the images online, make some visual notes just like this, some ideas of what might go into your book of hours before you actually start drawing on the cover. The style of the drawing, that's totally up to you. It can be as realistic or as abstract as you want. You won't be graded on your artistic talents, but you will be graded on how well you've embodied the, the book of hours. Were you able to pick out these characteristics and then combine them in an original image? So in the assignment details, there are some more visual examples. Uh, have some fun with this project uh, this week. You can choose any month, right? The book of hours is, it was, it had calendar pages, right? You can choose any month to illustrate for your calendar page. It doesn't have to be this month. All right, that's all.